This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, friends, to this rather unusual gathering of the Brockway Presbyterian Church. My name is Reverend Christopher McCloskey. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent in the year of our Lord, 2020. I hope that you all are well. I miss you all so much already. But though we may not be able to be physically together, we are still called to be together spiritually. And while we cannot gather in the physical church building here on Main Street Brockway, we are still the church. For the church is wherever Christ resides, and we are assured that Christ resides with and in each one of us. So do not worry and do not be afraid, for God is with us even now. Today's reading comes from the book of Psalms, the 23rd Psalm. Listen again to these beloved words and hear anew of God's promises of care, protection, and provision. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of right things for his namesake. Even though I walk in the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, guide us and protect us still. Shower us with your blessings and help us find joy again in you. Calm our hearts, O Lord. Send to us your peace. Amen. Currently, our world is traversing a dark valley, likely one of the darkest that most of us living have ever known. And in this darkness, we have grown afraid. To admit our fear in the face of such an enemy is not an admission of faithlessness, but an admission of our humanity. To fear is to be human, but to be courageous is also equally human. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the overcoming of it. Scripture reminds us that the source of our courage is not our pride or faith in ourselves or our abilities. It does not reside from within ourselves at all, but rather courage is a gift from God. It is a gift given to us in the form of hope and faith. It is a gift given to us in the form of God's steadfast love manifest by his promises to provide for us and protect us. Disasters like the one we are facing right now reminds us that we are not as invincible as we may have believed. We are not as self-sufficient, independent, or self-reliant as we may have pretended. No, this pandemic is a reminder that we are in need, great need of one another, and that we are utterly dependent on God. For it is God and God alone who provides food for us to eat and water for us to drink. It is God and God alone who gives us shelter and protects us from our enemies. It is only in trusting God that we realize that through him we lack nothing. For God is everywhere the giver, renewer, and sustainer of all life. Even now God is at work, not just for the sake of humanity whom he loves, whom he has adopted and called his own, but specifically for your sake. God promises to be with you. For God intimately knows you and loves you. He knows your name and calls you beloved. This is the true source of all courage. God's love is the strength that will allow us to walk through this darkest of valleys. For the love of God overcomes all fear. The light of God will penetrate the fog of panic and confusion that we now face. And by his mercy, we will indeed see again. The 23rd Psalm 
may often be read at funerals. But this psalm is far more about life than it is about death. It is about the gift of life we have been given now and the promises of eternal life we have been given once we leave this mortal coil. The 23rd Psalm is about our God who promises to keep us alive even in the face of earthly death. For with God we truly lack for nothing. The 23rd Psalm is about God with us. It is about our God who mourns with us when we weep, who comforts us when we are afraid, who laughs with us in every fleeting moment of joy. It is about our God who will sustain us even in isolation, who promises to walk with us and talk with us even when we no longer can stand the silence or the constant stream of disheartening news from our screens. So I call on you this day to reaffirm your faith, to declare your loyalty to our shepherding king. We must place God again at the center of our lives so that we can be strong enough to go on. I call on you to be courageous, and as paradoxical as it may sound, for most of us, courage these days means staying at home. It means calling your loved ones. It means sending them letters or cards. It means praying for first responders and medical professionals. We might think of courage as some great act of heroism, but courage is really about loving when loving is hard, Courage is about doing the right thing, even when that means sacrifice and hardship. Courage is about trusting in God, even when we are afraid. And no one teaches us more about loving when loving is hard than our Lord. Our God, who has loved humanity even through our evil violence and sin. Our God, who has loved us even through idolatry and desertion. Our God, who has loved us through crucifixion, who loved us even through death whose love did not end with the grave, but persisted in order to give us eternal life. God has loved us and will love us still, even when doing so is hard. So let us again find the strength to trust in God, even today, when God seems further from us than ever. But nothing could be further from the truth. God has never abandoned his people before, and he never will. Have courage. Have faith. Amen. Having heard again of how much God loves us, let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. O Lord, you are strong to save. You have overcome sin and evil. You have vanquished death. You are our shepherd and our champion. Come swiftly then to our aid. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Out of the darkness we cry to you, Out of fear and alarm, we call on your holy name. Come and make your healing presence known. We pray for doctors and nurses. We pray for all who are caring for the sick and dying. We pray for those who must continue to work in these difficult circumstances for the benefit of all. We pray for first responders and for our leaders. Lend to them your strength and wisdom. We pray for your provision, Lord. Lead us in sharing and giving of ourselves so that all may live. We pray for your protection and shelter, Lord. Send forth your great heavenly host. We lift to you all of our worries. We turn over all of our anxieties and fears to you. Send to us, Lord, your forever peace. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. While this may be the end of this time of worship and prayer, Let each day and each moment of your life be an act of worship and praise. Be strengthened by your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, who has overcome and will overcome all darkness. Be courageous, do what is right, and love even when loving is hard. Know that God is with you now on this day and forevermore. Amen.